Now let us turn to Malachi, third chapter please, from the fifth verse. I will come near to you to judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, said the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. I change not. Today, we have the great opportunity to give the word of God to all kinds of people. And we are not doing it. I can't understand this. That's not a Christian trait at all. The Christian trait is to go where there are the remotest, hardest people and lift them. You know, my friends, I've never had any meeting of the fellowship uh, canceled due to persecution. But I heard of a place up in the Himalayas where they were going to have a Christmas carol service. And we used that service to tell people about Jesus. And some of the ultra Hindus, fanatic Hindus, raised such an opposition that they canceled that meeting. I always tremble for such a situation where the gospel does not go there is going to be a calamity. There is going to be a horrible scourge. Now today, I do not know if one can just stand in a street corner and preach in Britain. Well, uh, shall we test it out? We won't stop the traffic. We won't hinder anybody. But, you see, people have lost that courage, that old art of being able to have a whole congregation. What happened to the times when Whitfield, George Whitfield, could address all of Yen and the Blackheath and Moorfields and so many other locations. 30,000, 40,000. And amazingly, they could do without any sound system. They carried the word of God to people and liberated them. Has God changed? No. Has the gospel changed? No. Who has changed? Our faith has changed. We are at a, such a low ebb in faith today. You know, 
we have become a cowardly lot. Unable to lift up the Savior. I don't know how, uh, with what fanfare, heathen festivals are being celebrated in Britain today. But I won't be surprised. There is a spiritual vacuum. So if you turn to Romans, the first chapter, what do you see? They change the glory of the uncorruptible God. You see, taking the changeless Savior, turning him into a little idol? How can you do that? And the 25th verse says, who changed the truth of God into a lie. You know, the Bible says, there is a lie in your right hand. That's an idol. It's a doctrine of lies, it says. And we see people treasuring their idols. I see people throwing away their idols. Gold, silver, throwing it away, discarding it. Friends, a lie. They changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature against nature. Just think of that. And some of the advisors of the present president of America are men who openly declare themselves to be homosexuals. Now, I let us look at it without any fanaticism, without trying to indict somebody or judge somebody. Okay, dispassionately looking at that subject. Do we want to further depopulate this nation? What are, we, what are we out to do when fathers suddenly leave their families and say, I have found a partner now? What happens to the family? This rise of AIDS is it ever going to be stemmed by just medical means? You know, people don't want to change their lifestyle. They say, this is an acceptable lifestyle. We will march. We will make it known to elementary school children. Now, where are we headed? You know, back in the 60s of the last century, people said, we will knock the great out of Great Britain. Who said it? Not strangers. Englishmen said it. We will knock the great out of Great Britain. Oh, yes. 
It's received more than a knockout blow now. And now, after homosexuality was legalized in 67, what has happened? Today we have got crime on the streets and the police are afraid to go into certain locations. There's, they just say, oh, we can't go into those locations. What do you mean? Where there is lawlessness. Now, what does God say? Therefore, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts. My dear friends, this has become a plague. And you know, let anybody look at it dispassionately. What will you find, whether in the European continent or anywhere else? Oh, you know, there is another false declaration which is made. What is it? Oh, you can't change it. We were born that way. That's not true. I have seen any number of people who had practiced homosexuality for years coming scot-free Now, what once people were ashamed of, today they are proud of. They want to declare it out on the street. Now, I often say to fathers, hey, will you tell your sons, follow my lifestyle? I quit the family, I went off running after my partner. Now, you follow me. I've got four of you boys in my home. I want you all to be homosexuals. Find me one father who will say that to his son. My dear people, we have gone berserk when a nation has gone berserk. We are sitting very happy. Oh, I'm getting my pension. Or I'm getting my money. This is a time when you and I should sound the warning and our trumpet should make no mistakable sound. And when we turn to Psalm 106 and verse 20, you know, every time that the people turned away from the just laws of God, they went into idolatry. Now here, we see in Psalm 106 and verse 20, Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. Just think of that. The similitude of an ox. Can anybody think of God as a cow? 
Why don't you look at the meadows and say, all those Jersey cows are no more than gods. But unfortunately, they seem to eat grass. A god who eats grass? My dear friends, but these are the prevalent beliefs in our modern world today. You will have any number of doctors in England from India who will still have this kind of persuasion. The cow is holy, not the living God. Just think of that. And we are incapable of dispelling this superstition and notion. And what do you think about your moral character? You're a lofty Christian, aren't you? You're a wonderful believer. You can dance. You can shout hallelujah. Great. We're all engaged in a kind of silly dance. At a time when the world is going down before our eyes, you know, we are not able to show forth the changeless God, the God of holiness, the God of love, the God who liberates from fear. And all this kind of superstition. How sad. So, actually, if you turn to Daniel chapter 4, we see how... Daniel told the king, Daniel 4 and verse 16, let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him. What is this? To King Nebuchadnezzar, a beast's heart be given unto him. What? Can a person so lofty as King Nebuchadnezzar become so beastly? You know, some of the crimes that are being committed in this emerald isle, this sceptered isle, this isle which had the laws of Alfred the Great and Magna Carta. This isle, some of those crimes that are being committed today in this isle are nothing but beastly. Let a beast's heart be given to him. Because of his pride. You know, my dear friends, we must search our hearts. There should be in no corner of our hearts pride. A little girl can't cross the village green. Who has invaded that village green? A girl on her way back from school 
can't cut across a little wood? Is she to be slaughtered and buried under the bushes? What kind of freedom is that? What kind of civilization is that? It's barbarity. Oh, my beloved people, let's cry for Britain. And not in a vague, generalized sense. Let us look at our own hearts. Are we the salt of the earth? Are we taking the word of God? Are we holding ourselves accountable? I am seeing this. I am witnessing this. I am reading it. When I open my morning's newspaper, and I am not at all moved by it. There is no fountain of prayer in my heart. The closet of prayer is neglected. The power that is with God, I have lost. Accountability. Let us pray. Oh, God, that changes not. We come to you. Lord, our God, thou knowest, we do live in perilous times. And there is no sense of accountability. And in certain parts of the, of the civilized world, the cops, the police, are suspected of being hand in glove with the criminal bunch and the drug runner. Oh, my father, at such a time, look at our spiritual bankruptcy. Unable to give the force upright men who will not be bribed by a billion or ten billion. Oh, forgive us, Lord, forgive us. We are nobodies. We are a bunch of nobodies. But we are lifting the Savior of the world, the one who does not change, whose love does not change, whose promises do not change, who by the blood of sacrifice has paid for the sins of all men. Come, Lord, and visit us. We beg you. In Jesus' holy name, amen.